Modern Male Radio with Jared Zavistoski, right here on LA Talk Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jared Zavistoski, and you're listening and watching Modern Male Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the stuff your daddy never knew. And joining me tonight, special guest, Rochelle Ritchie. Hi. Everybody's all excited. <laughs> I, get, I get compliments for bringing uh, uh, such a, a plethora of, of extremely pretty women on the show, but, I, I mean, you're definitely, definitely... Uh, one of the one of the prettiest girls I've ever had on the show. So thank you for coming down here, and our viewers, I'm sure they're, they're oh, very thanks. very excited. <laughs> um, so awesome. Uh, we we have had uh, quite a few conversations uh, pre-show, and there's so much uh, to you that it's really exciting to have you on because we we get to cover so many different uh, dynamics. I think of uh, dating and porn and dating in porn. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, first, first question uh, out of any I want to ask is, uh, what's it like to date a porn star? Um, I actually have dated a porn star, but... <laughs> well, uh, then you kind of know. But she wasn't but, an active porn star. She, was, she had done porn uh, much, much earlier. Well, I guess every, everyone's different. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the person, how they are, like, outside I, of the industry. Have you ever met anybody who's, like, unconventionally like reserved uh outside of the industry like they're like nuns on the outside but then they're like freaky when they get in the porn thing like have you ever met any girls like that um no i haven't actually no no okay no, so no. It, i mean it, it's fairly i would because uh, I, I i've seen and met and have had you know friendships with a lot of them they're, they're very mm -hmm. open uh yeah it's very unreserved uh, in public so yeah. But do you find that uh, that you attract jealous types or do you find that you attract the opposite guys that don't don't really care what you do? It goes hand in hand. Um, I've came across a lot of guys that like I'll start like talking to at first and they're like, oh, I don't care that you do this or that, you know, that you're important and you um, fuck on TV. And then like um, two weeks later, they're like, I don't want you to do that. I want you to change your career. Like, this is not cool. If we're going to be together, then you need to change what you're doing. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, whenever you first start talking to me, I'm very honest. Um, whenever I meet someone and they're like, oh, well, what do you do for a living? I don't like to like lie or like cover up what I do because eventually they're going to find out. So automatically they, they already know. Yeah. Just like, like what they're getting themselves into. I'm in, I'm in porn. Yeah. So deal with it. <laughs> Caveat. I like dick, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So uh, ha have you had, uh, so have you been in many relationships in porn? You're actually quite, quite young. Um, you're, you're, you're just a baby. I am. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, how long, how long have you been in porn? Um, for about a year and a half. Okay. So still new. But you've been killing it. You've been you've been whooping ass, taking taking names. Everything has been good. Yeah. So far, so good. Now I'm going overseas and shooting. So getting out there, known internationally, not just in the U.S. So. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And you know, it's 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 really important to you know work a lot and then kind of save your money because you see a lot of porn stars that end up in that industry. They take it for granted. They spend all their money and they yeah. end up kind of down and out later in life. Yeah, um, that's exactly what I don't want to be. So. Yeah. So I'm trying to be smart and save all the money I can. <laughs> smart. Yeah. yeah. What are your what are your plans for the future? What are you what are you looking to get into? Um, I'm definitely interested in, um, in investing my money into real estate, um, investing money into houses, like flipping them, renting them out. Um, I've that that's something really well to do. Um, my family does it in mm -hmm. Texas, and um, I'm just kind of learning from them and seeing how successful they've been in the business. So um, I'm definitely interested in that. That's great. Yeah. So back to dating. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Uh, so how, how many, I mean, while, while you were consistently in porn, how many relationships have you been in or, or do you see a lot of relationships like kind of start and then all of a sudden you're like, it's not going to work. I actually, I haven't been in any, I haven't been in a relationship in like two and a half years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. 
So it's it's not it hasn't been something that really affects you. No, I mean I've of course I've like been on dates and stuff, but mm. nothing um, serious. Yeah, I'm picky, so super. And I get um, tired of people really quick, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart. Um, so when, I mean. Do you find a lot of guys that are like what 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 so what's the prerequisite to date a porn star? Because, I, I mean, if some guy came up to you and was like, "Hey, I really wanna, I really wanna get with this girl. I I really wanna date her." And uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to not know that you do, do porn. What what so what's your like? What's your system like? What's do you have like a checklist? Like, what are your prerequisites? I don't really have a checklist. Um, I just have to hang out with them and see how they are. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't really have a type, so I can't, like, I can't have, like, some, like, meathead tattooed guy come up to me and, you know, I don't know. I just have to, like, see how they are. So I could have, like, that type, then I could have, like, a guy that is, like, super professional, business, wear suits, no tattoos. I don't know. I just have to, like, talk to them and Oh, so you like the professional guys, huh? No, I mean... I what like, about nerdy I like guys? A, I like a mixture of all. I don't have a specific type that I go for. Okay. Do you have a specific race of men that you go for? Um, I don't discriminate, but I prefer um, white men. Okay. So white businessmen looking at like Archer and stuff. I'm trying I'm trying to help you guys here. <laughs> I'm trying to help you guys. Uh, so what what are like the winning things? Like what wins you over? What what, what does a guy got to do to like get, get in your heart, you know? Um, I'm all about, um, the whole like respectful thing and having manners, like opening the door, like that rarely happens anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, the car door, the door, like walking into a place, um, and, and I'm a, an attention whore, so I like attention. Mm. So it's like, I want it to be all about me. Yeah. I don't know. And just like. You can't have a guy out there competing with you. Or yeah, no. Trying to steal your thunder. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, those are good. Those are good pointers. Um, are there anything? Um, so manners, suit, tie, business guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sounds like, uh, is, there, is there like an age bracket? Like what if he was like super old, but like, well, you know. Well, I actually, I love older men, like 30 and up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I have a I have a fetish for older men. I love it. Okay, I'm surprised you're not taken already. There's so many rich guys in LA. <laughs> I don't really, but see, that doesn't matter to me. Like, you could be a ri rich, or you could be like be, super poor. I mean, not super poor, but I mean, have your shit together. What if you rode a bike? <laughs> Would you do it then? What if you What if you What if you rode a bike to work, but he had a suit, but it was he had a bike. Like he didn't have a car, he just. Well, he needs to have a car. So, but like, what if he had like a scooter? <laughs> no. No, no scooters. No, because that would make me think like. What's your minimum? What's your minimum vehicular requirement? Bike. So no on bike, no on scooter. <laughs> what if he had like, I don't know, like, a, a a really souped up Vespa? I guess that's kind of a scooter. No. No. No, but I, I mean, know. a Vespa technically works. It, they, you can you can fit two on a Vespa. It's really no, awkward. I would never I've seen get it. on one. Of <laughs> I would never get on one of those. So no Vespas. No. Okay. Uh, what if you had a motorcycle? That's cool. I like motorcycles. Okay. So the vehicular minimum to get with this <laughs> chick is uh, have a have a motorcycle or or higher or higher. Sometimes motorcycles can be. I do it trips me out. I go I, and I look at motorcycles because I used to have a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And every now and again, I kind of like, I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I might like to have a motorcycle. And I go and look them up. And I'm like, I don't know. They're like scary. They're expensive. Everybody yeah. I know that's owned one has had uh, like one really bad crash on them. Yeah, that scares me. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know with that. But everybody only ever has that one. Like mm -hmm. everybody I know has had one crash and they either stopped riding or like, they kept riding. But like, I do. I met this guy who literally, I think he had broken from like his ankle to his neck, he'd broken almost every bone all the way up. Wow. No Just way. like shattered like like 200 bones. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scary thing. I mean, my first day on the road, I think uh, I, was a, <laughs> I was a kid. I almost hit a motorcyclist. They're hard to see. <laughs> they are. And out here in Los Angeles, like it's legal to ride go, your... Go between lanes. Yeah. Like in Texas, it's not. And... Um, that's where I'm originally from, so I'm not used to seeing that. And then whenever I moved out here, it's like, 
Mm -hmm. Oh my God, what is this guy doing? <laughs> like, and then they like creep up on you in the back. I'm like, oh my God, I almost hit that guy. Yeah, they, they literally ride in your blind it's spot. It's so dangerous. That should be illegal to. I, ride I a agree. Like it's that. very not practical. Especially at night too. It's. Right. It's, yeah. Because so, so the their headlights are like not bright at all. Uh, I see him coming. I, I don't know. I just, I had so many experiences where I, I think I almost hit a, uh, a bike that I, I'm very, very particular. Like if I see a bike anywhere around me, I'll just like stop. I'm like, ah! <laughs> like I don't stop, but like I just, uh, like I tense up and I'm like, okay, where is he? 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 See, and I, I don't watch out for him as much as I should. Just about but I'm it. not a good driver anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to admit. I've um, had like four wrecks in my car. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. But none out here so far. Knock on wood. It's wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it is wood. What else would it be? I don't know. It could be metal. Like metal? Yeah. I think it's wood. Pretty sure. Or, or particle board, which is technically wood. Um, so cool. Uh, how is... Um, so uh, you've been... You, you travel a lot. You're, you're like barely ever here. You're, yeah. you're You're all over the place. Do you ha have you met any European men that you think are you know kind of up your alley? Do you like do you like yeah, European men? Yeah, I, I love the European men. Okay. It, there's they're so different than the guys over here. Um, what could Americans learn from the Europeans? How to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's different? I don't, they're just like so much more into it. Like they love their job and. Um, I don't know. They so maybe just, our culture they, is a little more, bit yeah, desexualized. Yeah. Like they really enjoy having having sex and fucking. Okay. Compared to the guys over here. I don't know. You just have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. I, I don't think that I will, but <laughs> I... Uh, uh, no, so... And that, that goes into something that you're, you're touching on a really, really important point here. Um is that you know our culture american culture where we've we've kind of idolized the stoic male the non-feeling non-verbal non mm -hmm. uh engaging male so it's very like uh you know desexualized it's very withdrawn it's very interior um and there's not a lot of um passion there's not a lot of exuberance and when guys kind of display that out here girls think that they're weird they're like oh my god you're weird you know yeah, because they aren't used to it yeah. But over over in Europe, it's like so natural. Like at first, whenever I had sex with like the first European guy, I was like, wow, like he he really likes having sex and he knows what he's doing. Like this is not what I'm used to back home. Yeah. Like, I like this. <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, so, I mean, what, what we're saying, we're, we're talking about Europeans, but like uh, guys in porn that are out here, uh, how are they? Um, there is a handful of good performers and then there are some that are just like, they're just in it for the money. They don't enjoy it. Yeah. They get to fuck a lot of different girls, but not every girl in this industry is attractive. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it's, I guess it's the same. It's the same way out there in Europe. Like there's not a t like a ton of like amazing performers, but there is performers that are good so i mean it's it's about the same but most of the good pro the male performers um that are over here in america are from europe uh, okay. yeah so so uh, yeah, well, i mean technically we're all from europe uh technically that's that's kind of where all all white people came from um, yeah i didn't know that <clears throat> what's that i didn't know that you didn't know that no you really didn't know that you're <laughs> no, fucking with me. i didn't know all white people came from europe like what part? Uh, all over, because okay. before um, America was run by Indians, there was there's lots of Indians. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About 200 years ago, this entire country was populated with nothing but Native Americans. They were, they're very tan people. Uh, they do not. Yeah. So all white people in America are immigrants from different parts of uh, either France or Germany or England or the, uh, Ireland populated a lot. Um, Italians, uh, yeah, and the Spanish. The Spanish, you know, Cr Christopher Columbus when he came over. Yeah. Yeah, and they they <laughs> he actually landed in South America. Uh, he didn't he didn't discover America. He discovered the Americas. But uh, God, you're so smart. No, that's that's just his, that's that's like uh, 
I'm surprised. That you you're, the, should know. you're the only person that I've ever met that doesn't know that. You're like Indians. You mean from India? <laughs> what of those? Uh, you know what, though? I, it's funny because sometimes I forget history and I'm like, oh, yeah, that thing happened. That one thing that was like so important and da da da. You learn all this stuff in school. And but then, you don't really use it outside of school. I never use it. Um, and there's so much competing with our attention th mm -hmm. this day and age. There's so much, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot to digest and process. And every second, you know, thing, new things are popping out, popping out. And it's, it's just crazy. The human mind doesn't have the ability to um, actually digest all that information. So I, I believe yeah. that we're evolving. And I believe that that's why we're seeing more attention deficit is because human beings' mo brains are actually starting to calibrate for, for constant influx of thought as opposed to actually having to concentrate and, and go out there. And, and you, you're just looking at me like, <laughs> she's like, what the fuck is he talking about right now? She's like, you're using big words again. Stop using big words. I'm so confused. <laughs> I know. It's okay. It happens. Um, it, it has happened more than once on the show. Um, I'm like, please don't use a big word while asking me a question. <laughs> uh, th these words are not that big. I mean, I got, I, I have a, I have a vocabulary, I have an arsenal of big words that I use. But you I, do. I will save them. Yes. Like, do you know what ambidextrous means? No. Okay. <laughs> it means that you can write with both hands. Can you do that? No, I'm not ambidextrous. I did, however, break my hand once, and I had to learn how to write with my left hand. Uh, and I had to learn how to do other things that we will not speak of with my left hand. Oh, yeah. So I'm ambidextrous <laughs> uh, in a couple ways, yeah. Um, do you know what supercalifragilisticexpialidocious means? Isn't that like off of a cartoon? Look, she got that one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was going to tell you it's made up. But, yeah, uh, that's good. So you got that. Um, so what else about the porn industry? Because, like, I've, I've always been fascinated by it. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I've never been a super judgmental human being. I've lived and experienced so many different walks of life that it's very, very hard for me to be like, that's wrong or that's right. The only thing I, inha I hate are spoiled entitled brats. Uh, I, I hate uh, people that have never experienced anything in life and are very sheltered. Those are the only kind of people that I have problems with when they're just like so, you know, closed, closed, closed in. I, I hate that. Um, <clears throat> but it, it fascinates me. But, you know, porn is not something that, I'll probably be doing it anytime soon. So, um, <laughs> but it's always, it's, it's just, I've met so many porn stars and I get along with them better than almost anyone. Um, I've gotten, you know, like you our our mutual friend Brookhaven is yeah. such an amazing human being and she's so sweet and she's so smart and like, <coughs> fuck me. <coughs> I just swallowed something. <coughs> That's exciting. All right. No, I don't have a radio. Oh, yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> Oh, that went up the wrong tube. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, and the cool thing about this show is is all the mistakes are so they're, they're so overlooked. They seem so big right now, but they're not. They, this will this will totally just pass off the radar, unless unless this is like the one show where it just looked terrible. Uh, you never know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I've met so many adult stars and performers, and they seem to have such a good head on their shoulders um, for the most part. Uh, some yeah. some could be a I little a, a little. Well, I, I mean, you would know. You would, you know way more of them than I do. I guess it goes 50-50. 50-50? Yeah. There can be some people in the industry that are just kind of like... Yeah, like, so out of there. Just dumb. Yeah. <coughs> like, you're a dumb. <laughs> just, I'm just going to walk up to people for the next couple of days and be like, smart, you're a dumb. You're smart, <laughs> you're a dumb. You're smart, you're a dumb. Oh, my God. Um... No, but it's – so are there things about porn that, like, most people don't know? Like, like what would be some common misconceptions about porn? Um, so um, a lot of people think that adult stars, like, we – well, of course, some companies do use unprotected – we do <coughs> do unprotected sex. We don't always wear condoms. So a lot of people think, like, these adult stars like have all these diseases which isn't the truth we're probably some of the cleanest human beings out there because we get tested um every 14 days and you have to yeah to shoot for a company you know they have to like go over the test make sure you're clean and people like whenever i go back home and i run into like old friends i haven't seen in a while they'll ask me like stupid questions and that's one of them they're like so do you like 
have like these diseases now like because you just like fuck all these people like no you fucking idiot like we get tested like that's stupid yeah yeah, yeah. you'd have to get tested uh and i've noticed that as well i, I i've talked to so, so a few people about that yeah and um yeah uh porn stars are very clean very nice very hygienic uh very very uh fun to be around for the most part <laughs> just fun to be around fun to be in um but uh I would, I would, so I've, I've, I was talking to Brooke about this and I guess there are some dark elements to the adult industry. Mm -hmm. There can be some depression, some weird things. I think another common misconception is that everybody that's in porn is from like a damaged environment. Yeah. And I was talking to Kelly. Which is true. Yeah. So why don't you fill us in on that a little bit? Um, well, I mean, I come from a very religious, good family background Mm -hmm. and Everyone had a college degree, very successful. I actually was in school before I started the adult industry. And um, so definitely not um, come from a damaged background. Everyone in my family has a good head on their shoulders. So yeah, I was raised normal, like (coughs) good family. That's good. That's yeah, no, uh, wasn't your grandpa like a mayor? Yeah. That's that's pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you come from like like really good stock. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of I kind of split two questions. There. I was talking about depression, and then I was talking about damaged, uh, mm-hmm. you know, stuff, uh, or people coming from a damaged environment, which m- uh, many times isn't true. There are lots of girls in porn that are not, um, you know, coming from damaged uh, places. And the other thing is, porn is a profession, and you know, if you don't show up on time, you don't get to your shoots and stuff. Like they'll drop you, right? Won't yeah, they? some companies won't ever book you again. Yeah, so you or actually if you have like a bad attitude on set. You know, come in like super exhausted because you had a long night the night before. They get pissed. Yeah. You know, you can't be under the influence of any on any drug or alcohol, and they actually record you before the scene starts. Like you have to hold up a newspaper, state the date, um, state your real um, first and last name, and. Um, say that you aren't under the influence of any drugs or alcohol. So they take it all really serious. It's mm, a legit job. Yeah. That's smart. You have to pay taxes, all that. <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine that. And, you know, they, they, I, there can be some, you know, crazy drugged out. Uh, I've met some some folks that do that, but not with the real yeah. big companies. Um, because it is a business and it's a billion dollar business. Right. They make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but talking about, you know, depression, or, uh, have you ever experienced that? Have you ever seen uh, where, where that happens, where people uh, end up getting into the industry? I'm not, I, you might not be the person to talk to about this if you haven't heard of it, but I remember Brooke was telling me that some people get in the industry and after a certain amount of years, they, mm-hmm. their, their lives, uh, they end up getting uh, really depressed. I can see that. Um, and I know a few people like that, actually. It's just... Because their lives, I don't know, like, I try to keep two separate lives, like my personal life and then yeah, you my life. And some people just get way too caught up into the porn industry and don't take time for themselves. And um, I, I don't know. I, well, for, one, for example, one of my girlfriends, like, she's 40 years old and she's dealing with this. She's like, well... Um, I can't get like I can't go on a regular date because I expect this from a guy because she's fucked so many guys in the industry, you know, like on camera that she expects every guy to be able to fuck like that. Then it's like depressing her because she can't find that. It's different things. Who's gonna be able to fuck like a porn star? And yeah. I think they're like, all- okay. Well- <laughs> That's and they, not like real life. <laughs> they do like cut in between scenes, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah, so, of course. So a porn, a, 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 an hour and a half porn shoot would initially it would it would uh, it would end up being like what four hours of fucking five hours. How long does it take to film an entire? It depends what company you're shooting for. Okay, but just ballpark. Mm, Forty-five minutes to an hour of fucking. For one, one what thirty minutes or for an hour shoot. Well, I mean, you can be on set for eight hours, but there's also like dialogue, hair, and makeup, um, like the intro of the scene. If a girl's doing like a solo, um, and then going into the fucking, I mean, yeah, like forty-five minutes, hour. 
Yeah. Two hours. It just it really de- depends on what company you're shooting for and how fast the cameraman works. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking. I mean, you need to think but about it. But you're like, I mean, you aren't fucking for that long straight. Like that's like stopping maybe a few times. Okay. <clears throat> that's exciting. Get, get, get your little so get, get your stamina back. <laughs> Kind of like, you know, yeah, go drink a Red Bull or kombucha and get back in there. Yeah, exactly. Go take a smoke break. Come back. That's crazy. So lots and lots and lots of uh, probably Viagra in that. Yeah. <laughs> Do they still use fluffers? Are those a thing? No. Yeah, I didn't no. I didn't think so. I've never seen one. I've never even heard of one. Um, and I would think with all of my life experience and job experience, <laughs> I would have at least met a fluffer once. Being like, yeah. what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a professional fluffer. You know, like I could see me coming across that. And in fact, now that I'm talking about it, I bet you I meet one. Like just like some yeah, really. Yeah, probably like this week or something. What's that? Probably this week. Yeah, it yeah, should be like, it should be ones. like, you know, in her, in her mid fifties, but look 80. And she'll be all like smoking a cigarette. She'll be like, you know, toothless and shit and makeup smeared all over the place. She'll be like, yeah, in my day, I was a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> now look what the porn industry did to me. <laughs> that, yeah, but that was like, you would have had to have not been hot enough to get into the porn industry. Right. In order to, like, like how do you not, so you're like, I want to do porn. And they're like, no, bitch. But you can be a fluffer. Yeah. Like, you got to think, like, how how fucked up is your grill to where you wouldn't even make it in porn? Yeah. Because, I mean, there's some ugly bitches in porn. There is. There are some really ugly women. I think, like, the majority of the new girls coming in now aren't so attractive. I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't uh, see the, the free stuff that you get online. It's always like a few years old. So mm-hmm. they've already kind of like tracked and there's, there's already new talent, but yeah, we don't have to name. We don't have, you, you no don't names. Have to, yeah. No, I would names. never. <laughs> so no, no haters up in here. No, no way. <laughs> <clears throat> so are you planning on doing porn for a long time? Or are you planning on doing porn for a very brief period of time? Um, Then I, I give it another two years. Yeah. If that. Um, right now, I am saving my money and I am looking into other businesses and then maybe um, start directing. And I, I'm having that opportunity over in Europe. I'm not going to give out every single detail because nothing is set in stone yet. But um, there is a company over there that um, has offered me this. And the ability to what? Direct? To direct, yeah. So tell me about porn directing. Is that, is that, it, it doesn't seem like that would be incredibly complicated, but is it? It actually is, it is. because there's so many different angles that you have to get. Um, even like fucking on camera is actually not the most comfortable thing because the guys are like in these like weird positions and like the angles, like you have to open up for the camera and it's not always like. It's not like super, super like enjoyable yeah because we're having to do all these like weird positions and stuff and then like <clears throat> even like the directors they get pissed off because they're like they'll like sit there and like scream at the guy like okay you need to open her up or you open up <laughs> 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 that's not a good angle we have to cut like let's we have to figure out a different position because like you can't see enough vagina or dick going in her that's yeah you yeah. think that they would have like code words like you know like I, I don't know. I, I guess calling it a penis or vagina would just get old for me after a while. And I'd, mm-hmm. I'd start creating like coiny, funny words to like, okay, put your, uh, you know, comida in her pinocha. So I don't know. Fucking, <laughs> I think that actually means to eat pussy in Spanish or something like that. But it's like bad. Um, I mean, like, like no, dirty. I haven't came across any, any, there's no like, there's no like no. secret little lingo. There's no funny. No, I haven't heard any. Okay. Well, maybe there is. I just haven't came across it. Or maybe Jared just needs to invent some porn lingo. Yeah. Just like throw that out there. Because I'm good at that. I, I, I really, I, I reinvented a lot of different things. Like, yeah, you're really smart. It happens. <laughs> my mom like dropped me on my head when I was a kid, but I, I tell people, I'm like, she dropped me just right so that it, like, it actually like, helped. It didn't hurt. So I got, I got so smart, guys. <laughs> I know how to be smart. You want to be smart like me when you grow up. <laughs> Uh, so is there anything else about porn that I don't know that, that we don't know that as viewers, um, cause I'm sure that a lot of your fans are going to watch the show and just, you know, be like, 
I want to get to know this girl. And I, I feel like a lot of interviews with porn stars are immediately driven into the dirt. Like, you know, this horny guy sitting here and he's like, ah, so you want to take the dick and da, 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 da. And just being like kind of, kind of really overtly crass. Yeah. And I don't feel like, uh, porn stars are addressed as enough as people or individuals and, and what they do and their kind of decisions for doing it. Um, and just talking about it pragmatically, I think that the more something is, uh, is, is thrown out there as this crass over sexual thing, the more it's going to catch, um, you know, resistance from evangelical or Puritan puritanical ideals, which <laughs> basically means really reserved religious people. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. That yeah. Did. So <laughs> I'm like, where is this going? <laughs> so I, I, you, when you watch it back, you'll be like, Oh, I get what he was saying. That makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, in the moment, sometimes I can be a little all over the place with what I'm saying. Um, but I, I really, uh, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's important to kind of like normalize it a little bit. I don't think that, uh, porn is a, is a bad thing. I don't think that it should be this gross or, you know, disgusting thing that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. religious or reserved people tend to make it out to be. The way I look at it is like everyone has sex mm -hmm. and has, you know, everyone gets horny where they want to fuck, but they want to dog us because we have the balls actually get up there and fuck on camera. Yeah. And I like to please and make other people happy, not necessarily me fucking them, but them like getting off on my videos. Like, that's awesome. I love making people happy. That's what I do. I make people happy. Yeah. No, so. lots of lots of men, I'm mm -hmm. sure, are very, very happy about you and your decision to do porn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> do you, so did you get a lot of like crazy fan mail? You know, ever since I put my now that I'm saying this, I'll probably get a ton of emails. Um, ever since I went free agent um, and left my agency that I was currently with, I put my email up on like Twitter and Instagram. So yeah, I do get quite a few emails, but they'll be asking me like stupid shit. So I don't even, I'll read like the first sentence and I'm like, okay. Yeah. So make sure that your first sentence is good guys. Uh, yeah. Cause I won't reply back. None of this, none of this, <laughs> uh, what, what's the craziest email that you've ever gotten we don't have to talk about it never mind we won't even bring that up i don't want to know what the craziest email you've ever... didn't i didn't i tell you about that i think yeah and i after yeah. reading that i was like oh <laughs> yeah you did you did show me an email once and i was like oh that's a that's a yeah. that's our kicker um and plus i don't want to i don't want to block you for making any money so you know i don't know uh yeah <laughs> that guy but might be watching he could be it was Cheers. quite interesting um yeah so uh, well, I had a whole line of questions to ask you. I think that the biggest one is, uh, well, I know that we're, we're almost, we're, we're getting there. Um, what are you transitioning from? So, I mean, you're going to do porn for the next three years. What are your, what are your life goals? What are you going to, what are you going to do? Um, well, I'm interested in, um, mainstream work. I've done some things before, um, um, I started out doing pageants whenever That's I was That's right. Young. You were yeah. a beauty queen. Yeah. Beauty queen, yeah. only 17. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> You're so stupid. That's ABBA, okay? <laughs> Nothing is stupid about ABBA, right? See that girl. <laughs> I don't know. I don't actually know the words to the song. But uh, if I did, if I did, you guys would be fucked right now. And I could find this on YouTube, uh, but I'll spare you. Um yeah, no, that's, you don't know that song? Do you know that song? I don't know. All right, hold on. Well, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not even going to do it. I'm not going to do it. No, there will be no ABBA. Um, ABBA is a, an amazing band. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're funny. You've, you've heard some of their songs. Um, Probably. Yeah. You've never heard that? She and the Dancing Queen on the seven. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You just sing it terribly. Yeah, I'm a horrible singer, I know. <laughs> I know. What do make me feel? What do make me feel good about <laughs> myself? Jesus. Um, so uh, from there, uh, you did you used, to do, you used to do pageant work. Mm -hmm. So you were like a beauty queen. You were like Miss Texas. Yeah. Hi y'all. I'm Miss Texas. And then you were going to school, and then you decided to get into porn. Mm -hmm. What was the decision behind that? Um, well, I've always been interested in the adult business. I always looked up to women like Pamela Anderson, Carmen Electra, Marilyn Monroe, and was I was Carmen Electra in porn. 
No, but like just sexual like women, you know, like mm -hmm. they're sex symbols. Like I always thought that was really hot, like ever since I was younger. And I actually started watching porn whenever I was like really, really young. You kind of look like Carmen Electra a little bit. I've gotten that before. Mm -hmm. A little bit. So you, you were watching porn from a very early age. So basically yeah. you were like, you're like a pageant beauty queen. And then you're <laughs> also super horny all yeah. the time. So you were like, let's just combine the two and make some fucking money. Yeah. Is that a, the equivalent of what happened? Um, well, I was in a relationship, so obviously I wasn't really thinking about doing porn at that time, but I had previously thought about doing it before I got in the relationship. Mm -hmm. After that relationship ended, I was like, you know what, fuck this. Like, um, I definitely am interested and in, want to talk to someone about getting involved into it. And actually, Brooke Haven helped me. Aw. Yeah. Um, one of our mutual friends that's a sports agent in Dallas, um, he is friends with Brooke, and they're, like, really good friends, and he got me in contact with her, and that's what led me to um, the agency I was currently with. Okay. So, yeah. Perfect. So, and then it was just a speed shot from there, and then you started uh, you started making waves. Yeah. Started kicking ass and taking names. You've you gotten pretty popular. <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, uh, so, and then from there, what, so you're going to get in porn, make some money real quick, and then transition out and be like a real estate mogul? Is that the plan? No. Um, I'm just kind of playing it by ear. You know, I, I still enjoy the adult business, but I don't want to do it forever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I what I enjoy most about the business is I like meeting different people and getting to travel and meet people and getting to fuck a bunch of different guys. And yeah. it totally be okay. Yeah, and I mean, there's a double <laughs> standard with that because I'm sitting over here like, like, oh, you know, I fuck a bunch of guys, but like, I mean, <laughs> think about it. That think about that. It's like a dream job. Yeah. If I were, if I were in her shoes, like, I get to travel the world, I get paid bank, and I get to fuck tons of different hot chicks. Uh, Who wouldn't want to have that job? Kind of a win-win <laughs> there. Um, and and you know, it just sucks because guys don't get paid like. Like the guys get some paid. of the big performers, they do. Yeah, they, yeah, but I mean, you gotta. You but gotta, you have to w work your way up. Yeah, that's like a lot of yeah. fucking. Like years. That's like years a lot of years. fucking. Yeah. I just I don't know if I could do that much fucking. I don't. Know. I at some point I would probably get. I'd be like, okay, I'm fucked out. I'm fucked out. I'm yeah. done. I can't. I just I would be like, yeah, my dick, no more. I'm done. <laughs> uh, and then I'd probably like like completely counteract that and do something like like the exact opposite of that, like become a priest or something for like a year. <laughs> Cause that's no, no, just how my brain works. Like I studied to be a pastor. And then after that, I was like, I was like at, right, right after that, I was like, Oh, I fucked this. Can't do this anymore. And then I became a professional fighter, like right after that. So I literally went from one to the next in like a month. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm over here. Like if I be, if I was a porn star, like what would be my hypothetical job afterwards? It would probably, probably be like, like a teacher or something. Something weird, yeah. Yeah. Some, and but that, that would never happen. They would never. He would never get hired. Yeah, I would never get hired. Teacher. Or like working with like animals or Greenpeace. <laughs> I like. I'd be in Africa like saving rhinos. <laughs> oh my god. Just like fuck it, yeah, you know, because I don't know, like that's. <laughs> it would be like the. I'm I'm trying to like internalize like what I would feel like if I was just so over fucking and what I would be doing. Uh, Excuse me. Um, I probably I'm doing about the same thing now. I mean, shit. I spent a lot of time in Hollywood, a lot of time uh, fucking off, fucking off, fucking, fucking whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, I spent a lot of time having fun with my life. And that's when it got, it got actually really boring, like going out and meeting girls. And I was just like, oh, fuck this. So then yeah. I started to go out and I'd meet girls and I would, would actually like like hook them up with my guy friends like and that became like a sport for me it became like this really interesting thing i was like i'd go out and my guy would be like or one of my one of my friends would be like you know oh man that girl fuck i'm, I'm so in love with her and i would be like oh you like that girl you like that girl is that the girl you want okay cool and i walk over and like orchestrate the whole <laughs> thing and then that was really fun for a while and as i started doing that more and more and more uh I, I got two things. I, I got this rumor spread around Hollywood that I was gay because nobody ever saw me fucking girls. And I was like, God damn it. So then I had to like, I had to like change that. Um, and then uh, I, I got, you know, geez, dude, like, could you help me? Like, I started to get people like actually calling me up, hitting me up, texting me for advice. Mm -hmm. And that's how the modern mail book started. So I went from being like, 
in it all the time to not in it whatsoever. And I wrote a book for like a year and a half. And then it was funny because when I, I think I went back out after that, I was I, I, there was so much ring rust. I was actually like almost referring in my head to my own book. I was like, wait, I got to do this. <laughs> oh, my God. Because I had gotten rusty, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. Um, oh, porn. It's a very, very interesting thing. It is. Because you know, I was a stripper. I did get offered. Uh, I did. I had I had uh, plenty of offers to be in that business. I just didn't do it. Uh, the pay's not there for the, the, the cost you know, yeah. it's, it's very, very the hard time to being on set, dealing with the bullshit. Well, no, not just that. It's, you know, it's not something I think nowadays it's a lot easier to transition from porn. Though at the same time, it's not because the Internet, you know, makes it so accessible for anybody to look you up. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas uh, if you were, um, you know, if you were like Stallone and you did it in the 80s, like one or two films, you could already be a movie star by the time people found out. They're like, Oh, my God, Sylvester Stallone in that one fucking right. obscure movie that never made it anywhere. But now it's like people could just Google you and find it. and Everything will be on there forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's image searches and all that shit. So yeah. it's like it's harder, but I think it's also to the point where it's uh, so oversaturated. There's just so much. So many people have done that and mm-hmm. kind of transitioned into, you know, different things. There could be a future for porn stars and, you know, acting roles or for sure. Maybe maybe I, I don't know. I think the teaching thing would, would take a while. <laughs> I don't think that you could be a teacher if you no, were a porn never, star. No, never, never. Yeah, like especially not for like, yeah, no, maybe college, maybe. I doubt it. Like maybe Probably like sex education that. for college, but like in I high school, know. you just have all these little horny boys in your class and it would just get weird. It would get weird. <laughs> <laughs> you just be sitting there looking at these kids in class and they'd be like, what? Oh my God. Have you ever, so uh, a, 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 a rare unknown fact about children um, is when you start to hit pu- puberty, like when I was like 13 or 14, mm-hmm. I remember like that's when those hoodies, those sweaters came out and like you have to put your hands in your pockets a lot because you'll be sitting in class and you'll just get random boners. Really? Yeah. Cause like your, your hormones are raging. You're, you know, I the girl know that, that. You, you th- you're thinking about is like sitting right over there and then the teacher calls on you and you're like literally just thinking about this chick and you are, or you, or you weren't thinking about anything. You were literally <laughs> just sitting there staring at your textbook and it's like, boom. And then the teacher calls on you. So you get like really good at like, you know, grabbing your jacket, pulling it over or like a book. Uh-huh. You can kind of walk up and, and you walk really like funny and awkward up to the class. And all you're doing the whole time is just praying like, go down, go down, go away, go away. It won't Aww. go away. It won't go away. <laughs> it's just like, uh-huh. <laughs> it sucks. So yeah. Unknown fact about junior high and, and, and boys. And for, you know, any of our teachers out there watching this, don't call on the, don't call on the guys. Just, just let them, let them, let them, if they have any answer, let them do it from their seat. <laughs> don't bring them up in front of the class. You evil, evil, evil people. It's funny. Yeah. It, and it's something that needs to be talked about. It sucks. It's, you know, <laughs> did it happen to you a lot? I'm assuming. Well, I was also an asshole. Uh, I was also a complete jackass in mm-hmm. school. So I was definitely like disruptive and annoying and da da da. So I can see that. Teachers, de- thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, teachers definitely want took the took the opportunity if they saw it to make an example of me, okay. uh, or to bring me up in class, or to you know kind of single me out. So, which did, stopped working out in their favor because eventually, instead of hiding my boner with a book, I just throw the book at them. But then you you know like you got to get up and walk out, and you don't have your book. So what are you gonna do now? Uh, that, does that make sense <laughs> to you? You look yeah. you look very confused. Um, I'm just listening to you talk. Just ranting right yeah. now. It happens. That's why I got a radio show because I mean, this is me. I don't know. It's like you're basis. talking to yourself. This, yeah, it happens. Uh, <laughs> well, cool. So we are almost done. Um, what? Uh, so where can people find you? Uh, do you have anything that you're promoting right now? Um, my website RochelleRitchie.com. Um, there's. I'm actually going to be linking up with new people to run my site. I've left the current um contractor yeah and they own your domain and your yeah 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 uh, so i'm figuring all that out right now but um twitter at rochelle ritchie and then instagram so uh any copyright lawyers out there anybody who wants to sue her old agency let's not talk about that or whatever i don't know just (laughs) just uh, yeah i'm already i'm already out of my contract with the agency Mm -hmm. i already had to pay a nice fee for that Okay. To get out. We won't talk about that no. anymore. So what have I'm you got gonna coming keep up? My mouth shut. <laughs> go for it. Uh, what do you? What do you? Uh, so what do you got going on right now? Are you? Are you working on anything big? Anything you want to promote? Um, I will be back in Europe 
Monday okay. shooting more European pornos. Yeah. yeah. Euro porn. <laughs> and I actually I shot 22 um, scenes in Europe this past month. So there's going to be a ton of new stuff coming out. That's like crazy hardcore. Interesting. Yeah. Like how hardcore, like super hardcore. Yeah. Like super, super hardcore. You'll have to see. Oh, there, there are no midgets, right? Or vegetables? No. Okay. <laughs> I watched there's this. Lot, there's lots of pee, though. Pee? Yeah. Because it's legal to do over there to shoot that, like Wait, pissing it, scenes. It's not. A, it's illegal over here? Mm -hmm. How is fucking on camera legal, but I pissing on I somebody on no camera? I have no idea. So it's not legal to pee on somebody and film it in America? It's illegal. Yeah. What? What? That is so weird. I know. So lots of that and lots of DPs. Oh, two dicks, one you. Yeah. Well, oh. actually more, but yeah, two two cocks and me. That's exciting, I guess. Yeah. Actually, more. <laughs> what does more mean? What is that? Um, more guys were involved. Oh, so it's like. So it's like a gangbang. It could be like eight yeah. cocks, one one Rochelle. Yeah. So it's like a DPR. DPRR. DP double penetration, Michelle Richie. Yeah. 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 DPRR. I, like, I was confused for a minute. I was like, what? What does that mean? Yeah, but see, that's what I'm talking about. Acronyms, man. Acronyms change the world. So these are little things that you guys can, uh, yeah. So, okay. So enough with that. And uh, where can people find you online? Uh, what, so you can find me at RochelleRitchie.com. Yes. And then Twitter at Rochelle Richie and then Instagram, Rochelle Richie. Okay. And that it should be up there on the screen, guys. That is, uh, what is it? Uh, how do you spell it? R-A-C-H-E-L-E-R-I-C-H-E-Y. Perfect. So uh, that's where you guys can go to Stalker if you want. And <laughs> you can also, you can always find us at, uh, go, if you're on my YouTube channel right now, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, these probably won't be on YouTube forever. We may end up uh, putting these on an actual TV network. So we're, we're looking forward to that. But um, if you're on YouTube now, subscribe, please. And um, you can find us at, uh, you, I, I hate that we don't have an actual like channel name. Like uh, my channel name is Modern Mail uh, for everything else. Like mo modern.mail, mail methodology on Twitter, uh, modern.mail on Instagram, and um, Modern Mail Inc. Uh, slash radio on online. But uh, for YouTube, I have no idea what like, it's like the channel is like a whole bunch of weird letters and stuff. So uh, just Google Jared Zavostowski or Google Modern Mail Radio or, or YouTube search modern mail radio and you will find us and um you can enjoy all of our shows because we always have exciting fun shows with uh, the most interesting guests <laughs> so um that's it for tonight folks thanks for tuning in to modern mail radio speechless, speechless. you're listening to modern mail radio with jared zavistoski right here on la talk radio